is Lisa Zorn. I'm a product manager here at Middle Atlantic Products. I focus on the accessory product line, which includes equipment support, cable management, and thermal management. Today I'll be speaking about unique ways to conceal the equipment, which is required in integrated systems. I'll walk through the various solutions, including when to use, the design and installation benefits, and the challenges associated with each of these options. We all know that integrated systems have changed. In the original way of doing things, which was not too long ago, we relied on large floor standing enclosures, which were installed in large rooms. The technology was not, was not located at the point of use. Each function of the system required a separate piece of equipment to be rack mounted, and it occupied at least one rack space. That was a norm, and there was very little flexibility. So now what is the new reality? The equipment has migrated to a smaller form factor, particularly due to several functions being integrated into one component. For example, the system used to require a separate amp, preamp, and equalizer. Thanks to the magic of software, this could be done with one piece of gear. In addition, the system now requires a lot of small devices that are not even rack mountable and don't always need to be accessed from the front or the rear of the rack. And many times, the solutions for these small device mounting challenges are not even incorporated into the initial design or specification. In addition, the available space which is allocated for equipment mounting within the enclosure and within the room is definitely shrinking and you must learn to do more with less. And as the equipment is moving closer to the point of, point of use, the architects, interior designers, and end users all require their AV, AV to be completely hidden out of sight. So now how do you make the most of this limited space? With all of the changes in both the type and the location of the equipment, how do you create a professional looking system where the technology is invisible to the user? This picture definitely is an exaggeration, but it shows the challenges and the frustrations that everyone in this room and everyone that is calling remotely has encountered. What creative solutions are available when a floor standing rack, a rack shelf, or a rack mount is not a viable option. So that's why we're here today. We'll walk through nine different solutions, nine different problem solvers, and hopefully some of these are new ideas that you can incorporate into your installations. First, we have the no man's land behind the rack rail. This is valuable real estate, and it is the ideal solution when you have a multitude of small devices. When you don't have to readily access the small devices from the front or the rear of the enclosure, why waste rack space by placing these small devices on a shelf? Many times you don't even have one or two available rack spaces, and this allows you to take full advantage of the space within the enclosure. With that being said, although these devices have a small footprint, you need to make sure to incorporate this solution in wider enclosures. Now everything in life has its pros and cons, and this is no exception. What are some of the challenges with mounting small devices in the no, man land, no man's land behind the rack rail? Some of the solutions, including the one that you see here, are specific to certain series and certain brands of racks, or require an adapter to fit into other racks. And then on the other end of the spectrum, some equipment manufacturers offer plates which accommodate their specific series of equipment, but it attaches to the rail of a multitude of enclosures. While this gives you the flexibility of enclosures to use, it is not universal in the equipment that can be attached. Another issue is while the installers love this solution, it is somewhat difficult to specify within a system drawing, or it is an afterthought. For that reason, it helps to view this as an installation helper which should be stocked so the installers can grab as needed. And as I mentioned, if you're using a narrow enclosure, many times there is, not enough room, there is not enough room between the rack rail and the side of the enclosure to fit these small devices. Next, we have integrating blank panels with shelves. Like mounting behind the rack rail, this too is ideal when the system requires small devices. The difference is you would use this option when the small devices need to be accessed from the front or from the rear of the rack from time to time. You also need to have available rack space within the enclosure to rack mount both the shelf and the panel. 
well, this is a great solution. Well, what is great about the solution is you can access the equipment when you need to service and make adjustments by simply removing the blank panel, while all other times the blank panel hides this equipment for a neat, clean look. While this is a great problem solver, there are a few drawbacks. Due to the rack mount shelf and blank panel, you will be taking up at least one rack space in the enclosure. And second, when you do have to access the equipment or to service or make adjustments, you do need to take a little bit of time to remove the panel. You also want to make sure that the rack shelf you choose includes a method to secure the device to the shelf, whether it is tie points for zip ties or Velcro straps or screwing to the underside of the shelf, screwing to the underside of the component. You also want to choose a shelf and panel combination which can be mounted together yet does not have any unsightly gaps. Next we have the creative use of wall mount racks. This is a particularly good solution in tight spaces when limited floor space prevents the use of floor standing racks. Here is an example of a wall mount rack which pivots open for easy access to the rear connections. On the next slide, I will show some other options when there is an even tighter depth limit and when you need to mount only a couple of pieces of equipment. Here are two examples of vertically mounting the equipment when the mounting does not protrude too far from the wall. When you choose a method, you should take into account whether it is in a secure or non-secure environment which affects the need for a fully enclosed unit and lockable doors. On the negative side, you, have somewhat lim you are somewhat limited in the available rack space for equipment as compared to a large floor standing rack. Next, we have hiding equipment within the ceiling, otherwise known as ceiling boxes. This is an ideal solution when you, have, when you need to have the equipment installed near the point of use, when the room design does not allow floor or wall racks, and when it is essential to have the equ equipment invisible to the user. People get nervous when they think about equipment being located within the ceiling. Ceiling boxes should be plenum approved, which means that they are fully enclosed and no airflow is going back into the plenum space. Some things to keep in mind when you choose a ceiling box. Do you need to rack mount equipment and attach small devices? Do you need to rack mount equipment or attach small devices? Some ceiling boxes include accommodations for both styles of mounting. Do you need basic power distribution or do you need to control the devices which are plugged into these outlets? If, is passive thermal management sufficient or is a fan system necessary? I already mentioned plenum rating. Due to this, the entry of cool air and exhaust of warm air happen, all happens to the openings in the room. Nothing blows into the plenum area. Remember that you will need to climb a ladder to install the ceiling box in the equipment as well as service the equipment. So you need to consider how easy is it to access this equipment. And related to that, just like you do with floor standing or wall mount racks, how easy is it to simply, um, how easy is it, is it to perform the majority of the integration in the shop or on the workbench and simply attach the fully loaded shelf into the ceiling box? And finally, do you need to attach a projector to this box? While ceiling boxes are a definite problem solver, there are two key challenges you may encounter. It is a lot easier to install and service equipment on ground level versus climbing up a ladder. And second, as compared to a standard rack, ceiling boxes do have somewhat of a limit in the amount of gear which can be installed, usually one piece of rack mount equipment and a few small devices. Now we already spoke about installing equipment in floor standing enclosures, wall mount racks, and ceiling boxes. When those are not viable options and the equipment needs to be installed at the point of use, a great alternative is to install the equipment beneath the table. This can be done by simply attaching a couple of pieces of gear to the underside of the table. Another option is to use special boxes, which are really like miniature racks, and they help to better protect the equipment and to facilitate cable and thermal management and provide options for hiding and securing the equipment. And when you have an even larger amount of gear or cabling and require an even higher level of aesthetics, a good alternative is to take advantage of the space within the rack. This, I'm sorry, to take advantage of the space within the table support. This can be done 
through the open space in a barrel type table within the table legs or within the table bases. And as with ceiling boxes, you do not have an infinite amount of space for the installed equipment. And when evaluating the various options, make sure that the equipment does not interfere with the user sitting at the table. You don't want the users bumping into the equipment or worse, <coughs> accidentally kicking the equipment or cab and cabling and causing damage to the technology and the connections. Another option is to install the equipment behind the display recessed in within the wall. This creates a very professional looking installation which conceals the equipment without increasing the profile of the display from the wall. There are various types of wall boxes and you will need to evaluate what equipment you need to install behind the wall, what are your power requirements, what are your cabling and connectivity requirements, and whether your project requires a wall box to be UL or ETL listed. Similar to the ceiling box constraints, you do not have an unlimited amount of space to install equipment. Since the wall box is installed behind the display, unless you are using an articulating display mount, you have limited access to the installed equipment once the display is already installed. In some cases, you will need to serve, if, in some cases, if you need to service a piece of equipment, you may need to remove the display to get to the equipment within the wall. In addition, since this is a recessed installation, you will need to cut out an opening in the wall. So this is not a good alternative if you are dealing with a non-permanent installation or if the building material does not allow for a cutout, such as a glass wall or masonry. And related to this, you will need an electrician to perform the electrical connection and activation, which requires additional coordination and costs. When you cannot or do not want to cut an opening in the wall, another option is to mount the small devices between the back of the display and the wall. For example, this might be an ideal solution in historical or education buildings which use brick walls. There is a broad range of ways to accomplish this type of installation, from simply attaching the small devices to a piece of plywood mounted to the wall, to zip tying devices directly to the display or the mount, to special brackets or boxes designed for particular types of equipment, to special plates which allow a multitude of equipment to be attached, as well as some accommodations for accessing that equipment. And with this, message, with this method, you also have some flexibility concerning when and how the electrician needs to get involved. What are some of the challenges you may encounter? As compared to wall boxes, this method definitely increases the profile of the mounted display from the wall as you have the added depth of the installed equipment and cabling. In addition, due to this added profile, a user walking near the side of the display may have a brief view of some of the installed equipment and cabling. Therefore, when the interior designer or end user have strict aesthetic requirements, this may not be a good alternative. When aesthetics are of utmost importance and the equipment must be installed at the point of use, consider installing the equipment within furniture. This goes beyond simply installing shelves or rack rail to existing furniture. You want to make sure that the furniture is optimized for protecting and accessing equipment, facilitates cable and thermal management best practices, allows you to perform the integration at the shop whenever possible, and keeps the interior designer, architect, and end user happy by including accommodations to customize the appearance to match the room decor. And what are some of the challenges with this type of solution? If this is a cost sensitive project, at first glance this type of technical furniture may appear more expensive than mounting equipment in a standard metal enclosure. You need to evaluate the cost of the enclosure against the cost and feasibility of locating the enclosure in a more remote location. While this may be a beautiful piece of furniture when the equipment is hidden behind the door, the furniture itself is still visible and it does occupy space. So you may be constrained by the requirements of a system with completely, and completely invis invisible um, equipment. Plus, it is somewhat easier to integrate equipment within a large open rack with lots of room for equipment and cable management. The final option I will talk about are carts and stands. The primary function of carts and stands is to support and in many cases transport the display to another location in the room or within the building where it will be viewed. It is great in a non-permanent installation 
and when the flexibility of a continually changing environment, continually changing configuration is necessary. For example, collaborative learning or collaborative work environments. With that being said, the display needs to be connected to the related system equipment, and there are options to accommodate this equipment. This can range from the attachment of small devices to vertically rack mounting one or two pieces of equipment to integrating rack bays within, to integrating rack bays or bases. And what are some of the drawbacks to carts and stands? As compared to a full-size rack, you have somewhat limited space allocated for the equipment. And second, these, solu these solutions focus on displays integrated with the related equipment. When your system does not require a display, other options like ceiling boxes or wall boxes may be better alternatives at the point of use. And unlike some of the other solutions we spoke about today, these carts and stands are not invisible and they do occupy space within the room. So to sum up what we spoke about today, you have an arsenal of alternatives to address various installation challenges, particularly when dealing with small devices. With, uh, I'm sorry, when, particularly when dealing with the shrinking size of equipment and the localization of technology. At the end of the day, several of us will be available um, to show you uh, this, some of these solutions on display, and we'll be able to speak about those particular solutions. But while I'm here right now, are there any questions I can answer for anybody? Kaylee, anybody remotely have any questions? Not yet. Okay, well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you.